careful steps. That's the guiding principle behind the new water treatment facility being built at the Coquitlam Reservoir. The motto applies to both methods used during construction and the reasons for the new plant. The purpose of the project is to build a new UV disinfection plant. That is to comply with recent uh, changes to the guidelines for Canadian drinking water quality. In this particular case, it's uh, Cryptosporidium, which happens to be a parasite that's endemic to most watersheds within British Columbia and includes our lake source here as well. The watershed's ozone treatment system is getting an upgrade and a new building is being built to house new technology. Ultraviolet lights are used to target pathogens. It is a very nifty type of technology. It does not add any type of chemical to the water but still allows us complete disinfection. The treatment process allows water to flow past ultraviolet light tubes, which sterilize microscopic organisms and leave them unable to replicate. 254 nanometers is the actual wavelength that UV lamps generate, and that disrupts the genetic makeup of these organisms. Being within the Coquitlam watershed, the environment is of utmost importance during both the planning and also during the construction phase. While the watershed range is upstream and not directly impacted by construction, attention is paid to the area around the 50 by 100 meter job site. The sediment pond that you're looking at here, this is actually where all the site water is being pumped to, then it runs through a storm tech system where it's pre-treated and it goes through what we call flocculation that uh, actually grabs the silt from the water, drops it out of suspension. We measure it, uh, it's called NTU, which is a measure of light through water. Um, here we're regulated to 5 NTU, which is very low, but achievable. As is common on excavations, narrow wells are drilled to pump groundwater away from the work site. We have two wells that are high in iron content. So they're being discharged through, and through aeration, it's dissipating the iron before discharge. We're below the threshold for fish. The Coquitlam River is one of several features that constrain the site. It flows along the eastern edge, passing behind site trailers. Paralleling that along the roadway is the existing drinking water supply pipe. Then on the west, a hillside juts up sharply. That's why we ended up with such a compact design. The result was a vertical configuration for the UV piping. That consequently resulted in a much deeper foundation at the bottom end. But one of the significant impacts that we have reduced with regards to the way the project has been managed is to take a number of the trucks off the roadways. That material that's being removed, up to 80,000 cubic meters, is being taken from the site into the watershed areas for disposal. That's about five to 6,000 truck trips that have been taken off of public roadways. One concern with this process was the spread of invasive plant seeds that were known to be on the site before work began. Japanese knotweed was at one, and policeman's helmet is another. What we've done here is to take those plants themselves, bag them, and it has been taken off-site for disposal in an appropriate landfill facility. Environmental monitoring will continue as the project progresses towards completion in late 2013. We pay a lot more attention to the environment than we ever did before. It's the new normal. <laughs>